Hey guys, welcome back to the Pulling Curls podcast. Today on episode 87, we're talking about what we learned. And in fact, I have like two teachers on to talk about what we learned. It's extra perfect. So let's untangle it. Welcome to the Pulling Curls Podcast. I'm Hillary, your curly-headed host on the podcast where we untangle everything from pregnancy, parenting, and home routines. I want you to know that there are no right answers for every family, and I find that simplifying my priorities is almost always the answer. It's tangled, just like my hair. Okay, guys, before we get started, just click to subscribe. You know you have a favorite podcast player. Get in there, find the Pulling Curls podcast if you're not listening to it already, and click subscribe. Okay, on today's podcast, I'm super excited for it. We have some awesome guests. They are the voices behind the No Guilt Mom podcast. And beyond that, they have such great homework information. We had my youngest take their homework class, which is to be done by the kids. They also have one for parents, but she did the kids one and it took so much pressure off of me. It was amazing. So I'm having to talk about like, pregnancy, but really they're amazing parenting resources for you guys. So I want to welcome today's guests, Joanne Crone and Bree Tucker from the No Guilt Mom podcast. Do you feel prepared for your delivery? In just three short hours, you can be prepared for the confident, collaborative delivery you want. You'll know what to expect and how to talk with your healthcare team. And there are no boring lessons in this class. I'll use humor, stories from my 20 years in the delivery room to engage both of you. I love how Alyssa told me that she found herself laughing at things that used to sound scary. Most of all, you guys are going to be on the same page from bump to bassinet. Join the online prenatal class for couples today. You can save 15% with coupon code UNTANGLED. You can find Find the link in the show notes. Hey guys, welcome to the Pulling Curls podcast. Hey. Hey. (laughs) Yeah, so this one's going to be kind of a different thing than what we usually do. It's not like me teaching or talking. We just want to have a discussion about what we learned about parenting from pregnancy and labor and delivery. And there's so much to learn about parenting from pregnancy and labor delivery. Like so much happened. (laughs) Well, and I think it just really prepares you and maybe you don't realize that until, you know, later. Until later, because you expect like everything to go according to plan in labor and delivery. And of course, that never happens. Yeah, I just keep thinking of of a rewrite of that poem. Everything I needed to know I learned in childbirth. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe. Okay, Joanne, it sounds like you have some feelings. What did you learn in in maternity, your maternity zone that you carried into parenthood and it was helpful. Okay. So I, um, I have two kids, uh, one who's 12 and one who's seven. And, uh, with my 12 year old, I, I like just wanted to experience birth and all of my family had C-sections before like my mom, my grandma, like we just attributed it to like our big head that runs in our family. (laughs) But Like I was so determined not to have that happen. And then like, I think 30 weeks in, my daughter was breech. They found my daughter was breech. And we just like, we scheduled a C-section the day after my delivery date. We're like, maybe she'll turn, maybe she'll turn. I even had like a little like a version. What is that called? A version? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I had one of those, which we stopped like because it hurt way too bad. Uh, but then she was born C-section the day after her delivery. And you know what? It's so funny because I went into labor the morning of my C-section, um, which I think was cruel because I got to I got to experience contractions, at, which I did not enjoy whatsoever. <laughs> But then like she was magically taken out. So there was an endpoint to that as well. Uh, So I think like that experience taught me that you, you can't plan for things in parenting, but you know, they'll turn out okay anyways. And the same with, with my son, like I had planned for um, a VBAC with him. I went to the Bradley natural childbirthing classes. Like I was so ready. And then three days after his due date, they're like, Oh, let's just take a little, you know, ultrasound, see what's going on. Breach breach again. And (laughs) and so we scheduled his C-section for the day after. And that that was great because I didn't go into labor for that one. So I didn't get to experience that. But again, it's like you can have plans and you can think about how it's going to go, but it usually doesn't end up that way. And it's still okay. And I think that's what I take from it. Oh man, such a good lesson for parenting, right? Yeah. I I think it's, I think it's true. Like I, I, I hardly know anyone that had a perfect delivery or at least 
and let me take that back, not perfect delivery, but had the one that they planned in their head down to their birthing plan. Mm-hmm. I, I hardly know anyone that's had that. As a matter of fact, I don't, I can't think of anyone. No, <laughs> I, I can't think of anyone that's that like that. that well. Mm-mm. I think every patient deviates somewhat because, well, also, how do we picture it? Because it's like Hollywood's made labor and delivery to look a certain way. So you have one thing in your head and then it's just very different when you get in there. And it's yeah. so wrong. It's so, so wrong. Like I got to see actual labor and delivery because my sister, um, she had her first baby last year. Well, 2019, actually. That's how I got to be in there. And um, oh, it was nothing, nothing like I pictured it being. And actually watching her go through the labor process and she had no epidural at first. She went through it for like a good 12, 14 hours before he just was not moving her son. And so it, it looked painful. It looked painful. And then like her face puffed up from all the pushing. And I'm like, did I really want this? No, I didn't. <laughs> that That's actually what I was going to say. Like, so, so I had a similar situation where like mine did not go the way it was supposed to. My first uh, pregnancy is what you would call eventful. <laughs> um, and my second pregnancy was super close. She was a, when the heck did, did we make that baby? Yeah. Kind of <laughs> where you're like, I don't even remember doing what needed to be done. Um, um, and, and just looking back at it, I was always really upset. I still have a little bit of guilt that I never got to go through childbirth, like mm. not because I had C-sections for both. Have you got to watch a childbirth? No, I have not. My, all my guilt went away okay. after watching my yeah. sister. I think that's yep. what it is, no. right? Like, but, but you're going back and you're going like, okay, it didn't go to plan, but everything still worked out beautifully. And I can, and maybe it's one of those things where like you have that guilt, but then once you go back and see it, you're like, nope, I'm happy with the way things turned out. And the same thing with parenting. There are things that you miss out on during parenting. Like, oh, oh, first steps didn't work out the way I wanted them to, or, oh, first word, I wasn't there when that happened. I so wish I had been there. And then you get a 12 year old that won't shut up. And you're like, okay, yeah, no, I, I don't, I'm, it's okay. It's okay. Can we, can we it's go all backwards okay. on all yeah. <laughs> I'm saying 12, but maybe more like three. (laughs) Yeah. I was just saying the other day that my 16 year old, there was a point where we wished he, we wondered if he would ever talk. Turns out he talks plenty. (laughs) Right. Yeah, exactly. Careful what you wish for, man. (laughs) We had that with my son too. He was two and not talking. And like, you always compare it to other people. And like my daughter, she was like talking at like 10 months. She was just so verbal. And then when he got to two and wasn't talking, I started worrying and fretting and looking every like, at all the research and whatever. And then a month later, bam, it like was a verbal explosion. I think with the second one, the first one talks so much. He never needed to talk until he went to kindergarten. So yeah, (laughs) it's hard with that, man. And I come from like, I had my background was in early intervention. So I worked with all the kids. So I was like, uber paranoid and worried about all that. And it's funny, my my first one, Robert was the quiet one. Mm-hmm. Like I had him evaluated and everything and his first word was car, <laughs> whatever. It, couldn't have thrown out a mama there, you know, oh. anything. But no, it was car. And it, and it took a while. He was a little bit late on getting it, but I was hyper aware and I was, I was just, I was, it, I was stuck in my head. And that happens with parenting too. I feel like a lot, like we mm-hmm. see all these articles, oh, watch out for this, watch out for that. And then you get stuck in this loop in your head that there's something really wrong going on. And sometimes we just need to take a breath, wait a little bit. And then there it comes. Yeah. Yeah. I have a hard time because everyone's like, well, the studies show. And I'm like, studies are great, but you, the study's not on you. You aren't the one that they did the study on and your body's so different, you know? And everyone's like, well, evidence-based birth says, and I'm like, exactly. But that's like a study. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they're like percentages too, because I mean, there's always people who fall outside of those and you're like likely to be one of those people. Yeah. It's hard. So that's why you have good professionals, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So mine, my mind was based in pregnancy and I felt like I, especially like on my third, I started to really realize the fine line between my own well being and the baby's well being, Right. Mm. Because like, there was all these things I was supposed to do for the baby and stuff like that. But it was starting, I was starting to like lose my mind over it, like doing kick counts. Like I didn't always have time for my kick counts. And and sometimes there were things they didn't end up happening because I just had to take care of other things in my life. And I think Mm -hmm. it's, I'm still a balance. I'm working out with a 20 year old, you know, is trying to find that balance between living your life and then devoting every single ounce of you to that baby. Right. Oh my gosh. 100%. Yeah. And it's finding that 
that balance because I mean, with my first, I beat myself up over breastfeeding. Like, yeah, I heard everything like breast is best, breast is best. And when I sat down to do it, it was the most painful experience. Like I would like, she would latch on and I would be like hitting my foot against the coffee table and just waiting for that initial pain to go away. And then to top it off, she wasn't gaining weight appropriately. And so like I, you have that guilt about not feeding your child enough. And there is so much like wrapped up in this babyhood. And I I was not keeping it together well at all. I had to go get therapy. And in that therapy, my therapist was like, all that matters is that you feed your baby. And I'm like, you're right. All that matters if I feed my... And I stopped breastfeeding that day and went to formula and I was a much happier person. And okay, I have to throw this out there about the whole breastfeeding thing. Mm-hmm. I think that that is something that a lot of us mothers beat ourselves up over a lot of us struggle with it. And we, I was just laughing with Joanne about this earlier uh, because I was like, you know, those nurses in the hospital, man, they are baby feeding machines. Like you have your baby, they give you your baby and you're like, okay, I want to breastfeed. And they're like, and that baby is there. She is eating and it is comfortable and it is great. And it's awesome. And you go home with your baby because you're like, yeah, I can do this. Yeah. And you do the breastfeeding. It's more like, bum, bum, and in comparison in Bree's like body movements right there the first one was like quick karate chops and the second one was like a tired ninja <laughs> like like dropping the, like uh, yeah. the football on the field at the at the goal line there. Yeah. yeah so uh, yeah and I think that a lot of times we compare ourselves with the experts in, in the hospital like as, as the labor and delivery nurse like I the, the nurses there they do breastfeeding for tons of babies every day they know exactly how to do those movements and then we beat ourselves up because we're not perfect mm-hmm. this is our first time, you know? I have to say that even as one of those who went home, it's not as magical. It's so much easier to get a baby on the breast standing above and away from the breast than looking down (laughs) at your breast. That is so funny. That's good to know. Like, yeah, because I think that's just, that's just a hard thing there. And, and yeah, I know what you're talking about too, with the, with trying to balance everything for your baby, because like with my first pregnancy, I had a placenta previa, but my, my doctor was like, well, you know, it may work out on its own. I don't want to freak you out. And yeah, flash forward, I was hospitalized from like 24 weeks. uh, And then they sent me home and then I, and they gave me a clear to have him like regular and then ended up having him again, C-section because I had another bleed. And it was just, yeah, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> There's but, a lot. There's a right. lot that you went but through. But I, I remember just like telling myself I had to sit in this hospital room. I was only allowed to get up uh, twice a day, once to take a shower for five minutes. And I had to sit in the shower chair. And once if someone came to me and give me a little ride in the wheelchair. So like I had to, lots of visitors in like the first week or two. And then like once I hit like, you know, month two. Oh, I <laughs> would have come and visited you if Aww, I had known you. You're so sweet. <laughs> Um, yeah. So like, I just remember being like really sad and crying myself to sleep at night thinking I had to do this. I I had to be unhappy because it's, it's what, you know, I had to do for, for my, for my son. And looking back at, I really wish I had just like reached out and told somebody that like, I'm losing my mind. I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm miserably sad. And then the same as you, like I was super depressed after I had him. Yeah. Cause it didn't work out the way that, you know, you ended up in the NICU and just, it didn't work out the way you thought it was going to. Yeah. So it is, it's super hard. It's like, um, and like that brings up to mind one other thing that I think translates into parenthood is because how hard it was with my first, like I didn't, I was the first of my friends to have a baby. No one else knew what it was like to like have this infant with you all the time. And so when my, um, when my son was born, like we had gone into, you know, Bradley classes. So I had a group of other mom friends who we were all due around the same time within like within one or two months of each other. And we actually, we weren't friends so much in the class, but after the class, as soon as the babies were born, oh my gosh, we had weekly lunches where we just uh, sat around and like we're breastfeeding and we had each other as support. And that made the entire difference with my second pregnancy because I had support. I had people who empathized with me. I had people to discuss stuff who were going through the exact same thing I was. And uh, because of that, I was able to get through a lot of the challenges and struggles. Um, I mean, I ended up breastfeeding my son almost two years because I was able to get through those first two months and get the support I needed to take away the pain, to learn how to nurse laying down, which was a game changer. And just make it through. And I think that's parenthood too. Like if you have connections with other parents and other moms and people who are going through the same thing you are, it's easier to get through those challenges and not get so down and make exactly. you happier. 
Yeah. Cause you're not alone. Yeah. You're not you alone. You think you're alone, but you're not alone. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think that's a huge lesson learned too there. Yeah. And side note for moms that are pregnant there, almost every hospital has a new mom's group. I know even during COVID ours was done online. So there is ways to like get that friend group. Even if you feel like you don't have the friend group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, this has been awesome, you guys. And I will say that if you choose not to breastfeed, I promise it's not the worst decision you'll make for your kid. It is not. Like from someone who was both sides, like totally equal. Like if I I was actually working during my daughter and I don't think I could have made breastfeeding work as a working parent. Well, especially as a teacher. Yeah, Yeah, as a teacher, I couldn't. And I stayed home with my son and that's the only way I was able to make it work. And I like that you said that, Hillary, because one of the best pieces of advice I got from a coworker while I was struggling with breastfeeding my son, I think she had said that her doctor, she had bre- she had struggled with breastfeeding one of her kids. She had like three and the doctor went, it's okay if you feed them formula. And she's like, no, no, breast is best. And he goes, hey, guess what? I was formula fed and I'm a doctor. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. And like as soon as she said that, I was like, oh yeah, I guess so, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I think we put so much pressure on ourselves unnecessarily and it's, it's just going to be more confusing as the older they get. So yeah. Enjoy those newborn days. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Thanks for coming on, you guys. Thanks Thank for you. having us. Fun fact about Bree and Joanne. They live like three miles away and we've seen each other like three times but we talk all the time on the internet that is how Hillary lives her life I hope you guys enjoyed that episode though I think there are a lot of things that you learn during pregnancy that you take with you now I'm a big believer that our babies are born completely helpless for a reason I always watch animal births and I'm like look how much that animal can do they can eat on their own like giraffes they plop all the way down they hit the floor and then they just get up and start walking there is none of that in the labor room if you are inspecting that so it's just I think our babies were given to us so that we could grow a very strong bond to them by helping them do absolutely everything in the beginning. So it was just a little tidbit I wanted to add. Thanks so much for joining us today. I hope we help smooth out a few of the snarls in your life. We drop an episode every Monday and we always appreciate it when you guys share and review. Until next time, we hope you have a tangle-free day. Tangle-free.